welcome back to my channel. It's Princess Ready here, and um, I have a story time for you guys. So, um, I know a lot of people are going through, um, with this quarantine, a lot of people are being unemployed, a lot of people are being laid off, um, and, you know, we're just going through so many hardships as a country, um, and there's a lot of economic, uh, hardships for our families, financial hardships, you know, people are trying to make ends meet and things like that. I want to say, first of all, I am grateful that I currently have a job and, um, I'm able to work from home and still, like, support myself and support my family, um, and I, I, wanna, I want us, those people that do currently have a job, to be grateful. But I want to also reach out to the people that currently are unemployed or laid off or whatever the position you might be in that you are trying to make ends meet, but um, your job and your career is being impacted right, by this pandemic. And I want to talk about a story time about when I was unemployed for nine months. And the story is surreal because I never would have seen myself being here. Uh, obviously, in hindsight, now I'm seeing that every single path that I took lined up with what God wanted me to do. Um, but in the moment, like while you're in the position, you try to make sense of it. Or while you're in there, you're feeling the hurt and you're feeling the pain of like not knowing what's coming next or not knowing where the next meal is coming from. We need to rest assured and know that God is our provider and he is our way maker and he makes a way where there seems to be no way. And he's calling on us to trust in him with all our heart and do not lean to our, to our own understanding. Um, but to acknowledge him in everything that we do. I just want to leave you guys with this encouragement in my story time. I hope it's encouraging for you. If you do like it, give it a thumbs up uh, and make sure that you're also subscribed to the channel and let me know if you guys like story times like these. I do have a lot of stories that I can share um, as part of Christian Chronicles. You know, we're back. We're back with Christian Chronicles, guys. Uh, it's been way too long and I'm really excited to share this with you guys. Um, just so you guys are aware that, you know, my life is not perfect and yours is not perfect either but everything happens for a reason and God allows it to happen the way that it does so that we can lean and trust in him. So <laughs> there was a time in my life when God told me that I needed to quit my job and it was at a point in my life where I was dealing with a lot of baggage like there were things that I haven't addressed and you know there were hurts that I felt that I haven't really focused attention on and I haven't really surrendered to God. So I was at a point in my life where I was working two jobs and I was also going to school full time. And I got so busy doing all of these things. Literally, my life was like, if I am not doing something, like something's wrong. And it was literally like, not because I'm saying, oh, I'm not doing anything, like something's wrong with me. But if I'm not doing something, it's because I'm forgetting an assignment or it's because I'm forgetting that I need to sleep because I have work tomorrow morning or like there was no room for me to just be like oh let me just go with the flow um if I wanted a day off I had to either sacrifice uh, going to work or going to class and a lot of the times it was sacrificing going to class a good place in my life I was just dealing with a lot of things like a lot of hurt um I was just carrying a lot of that with me and instead of like really and truly surrendering it to God I was at a place where um I wanted to not be in my thoughts like yes I during that time I sought God so much so much more because I realized okay I just didn't know myself and I just didn't want to deal with that so whenever I was by myself or whenever I was in my room um I lived with my parents at the time um I would just break down in tears and like really cry out to God and express to him you know my frustrations and things that I've been going through and I just remember I had to make the decision to leave one of my jobs and of course I went with the one that was higher paying at the time and you know strategically the way I planned it out like it made sense um my school was closer to the other job that I was going to go with um the way my schedules were set up it just worked out like I could go to work and then go to class after I go to class and then go to work right after like it just made sense um so I made that decision it was a very difficult decision because I knew myself I'm not a quitter like I would stick with something until the very end, no matter how bad it may seem. And that's just the type of person that I always was. So I was like, no, I can make it work, I can make it work. But then I had to realize that, nope, actually I'm doing an internship. Um, I am going to school full time. And like this internship is also gonna be like a job. So it was like, I was doing my internship while I was also working. Like I had to finish out the hours that I owed for the internship while also working. And then it was to the point where I had favor with my supervisor that she was like, you know what, I'm going to use the same hours that you're actually working and I'm going to apply it to your internship um, hours. So like you can balance the two. But it's with a lot of things. I was working like 50 hours 
and then also going to school full time, which everybody knows like when you're going to school full time, that's another full time job. And I was so exhausted. Like I wasn't taking the time that I needed to focus on myself and really take care of myself mentally, emotionally, emotionally, physically. Like I would go get my nails done every two weeks. Um, sometimes my toes too. Uh, and like I would go sometimes get my hair done. Like I would just spend money like random like oh I'm working whatever let me just find time in my schedule to go take care of myself and it was so bad that like I had to really like think and plan out like at this time I was keeping a planner so I had to like plan out every single thing that I wanted to do and schedule in my appointments and schedule in people hanging out with friends like it was to the point where I just I couldn't like I couldn't balance everything and I made that decision uh through prayer that you know I needed to let go of one of the jobs and working at the bridal shop that was the one that I let go of and I kept the job at the museum which of course would have taken me um into higher positions and things like that it um definitely had more room for growth um so I was excited I was like grateful for that decision like it made sense um you know I was gonna be in school and just super duper focused and that was my reason for leaving the job I believe I left the job in July or like sometime in the summer ish right of 2000 Guys, I want to say 2016, okay? I'm just like estimating, 2016, 2017, like sometime around then was when I left the job. I want to say it was 2016 though. So I drafted up my resignation letter. I was like, okay, this makes sense, it's perfect. I got this, whatever, whatever. <laughs> and it made so much sense. Like, okay, this is great, this is working out. And so, um, oh geez. And then I decided that, okay, I was gonna stick out with this other job. So I stuck with that job, everything was going well, things were awesome. But that same fall semester, unfortunately, I couldn't afford to pay for school. So not only was I not in school for that semester, I was only working one job. Um, and I had to like really focus now on myself. Like I had more time in the world to focus on myself and my um, emotional and physical health. So the job was paying a decent amount still. So I was still going to get my nails done, still going to get my hair done, still going to do all these stuff and wasting money, basically. Um, and then... I had to realize that in the, my alone time, like I needed to spend more time with God. So I got like these books and stuff. I was doing these Bible plans. I was in like this group with um some of my sisters and like we were really getting into the word and I was like, really like, okay, God, I'm gonna surrender this to you. Like, I don't wanna feel like this anymore. I don't wanna be in denial about the hurt that I'm feeling. Like I wanna actually surrender this to you. And so I realized that okay, I'm going to spend more time with God and seek him. And I remember I visited my old job. My manager was like, well, girl, now you're not even in school. And the reason that you left was because you was in school. Like, are you serious? Like, she wasn't very happy with my resi resignation. She was actually, <laughs> she's so funny. She was actually going to be, like, she was one of the people who were like, what is this? Like, she looked at the letter, the envelope, and she was like, what is this? She's like, no, I'm not accepting this. Like, I'm not. <laughs> um, but we're still really good friends. But, um, yeah, it was, it was definitely hard to leave that job because I had fun. Like, you know, I loved all my coworkers. They loved me. And we had fun at that job like, so after that um i want to say it was in 2017 yes so a whole year later in 2017 um i actually decided that spring semester i was going to go back to school and all that stuff didn't qualify for um the loan i don't know why i'm talking about school but like i didn't qualify for that you know go to school for free loan thing that they were doing with new york city because um i had already taken the fall semester off so like that's more money had to go take out a loan uh for that semester and i was freaking out because i'm like yo now i gotta pay for school out of pocket but i'm gonna take this loan and it's gonna keep me until now it's gonna keep me but i just remember god telling me don't waste this money save it don't waste this money save it so I'm just like, it's like, why would I, why would I need to save it? Like this money is supposed to be meant for like my upkeep and like, you know, not working the other job. So all that money that I'm missing out on is basically what this loan is for. Um, and I of course took out more than I really needed for the semester. So I had a few like excess, um, that came to me, but then God was like, don't waste this money, save it. And that's all I kept hearing. So, um, even though I was getting money in from the job and the money from the loan, I actually put it into my savings. And um, I tried to make sure that I didn't touch as much and I made sure that I limited myself to say, okay, I spend X amount every day on lunch or X amount every week on transportation and all that other stuff. So I factored in everything that I would need and I was just saving for a rainy day. Like I didn't know exactly why I was doing all the savings, but it was just like, put it to the side, save it, don't waste the money. And I just listened to that voice that told, kept telling me to do that and that's exactly what it did. And so it came to the point where towards the, I want to say it was in October of 2017. Um, 
I had just celebrated my 21st birthday in August and like I just built this amazing bond with my co-workers and then now it was into the fall season and um <laughs> I got this revelation like girl you're trying to graduate on time you're gonna have to take some extra classes you're gonna have to leave this job <laughs> and I was just like what like I legit did I worked full-time two jobs basically two part-time jobs which is like full-time and then some um and I also was in school full-time why would I need to leave this job if I did all those stuff like I'm prepared to do this job and also go to school and take these extra classes mind you you're supposed to take about 15 credits I think I was taking 21 or 22 credits so like don't don't even ask I don't even know how I was able to sign up for it but I spoke to my advisor and I was like um, you know, I'm trying to graduate online. Like, this is what it is. Of course, if you guys want to hear my actual graduation story, there's a whole other story around that. But um, I just remember, like, that was my goal. I wanted to graduate on time, so I needed to focus on, like, school and, like, get this stuff out of the way and take the extra classes that I needed to take. And so I was like, that doesn't make any sense. I should be able to, like, balance both. And that's not me being rude to God or anything, but I was just like, no, like, I can make it work. Logically, I can make it work. And the voice came again in November. This time when it came, I remember speaking to my accountability partner about it. And I was like, honestly, God is telling me that I need to leave my job. And I've been trying to not hear it. Like, you know, you hear the still voice and you're just like, huh? <laughs> no, for real. Like, I'm being real, okay? Um, like, And she was like, well, you need to be more in prayer about it and find out that's really God and to, like, when he wants you to do that. And I was like, you know what? You're right. Like, he keeps telling me that I need to leave this job, but I don't know a date. I was like, he literally just told me, write your resignation letter. And that was it. So I was like, I don't know if he wants me to leave now. I don't know if he wants me to leave in a month. I don't know if he wants me to leave next year. But I feel like he's telling me I need to start writing this letter. On that time, I decided, all right, I'm about to get ready to start writing this letter. But then I realized when you're writing a resignation letter, you title it with your name and your address. Just like how when you're applying for a job, you put like your letterhead and then you put to whom it may concern and then you write the date. Now, I knew that my resignation letter, I wanted to give them two weeks notice. So I was like, okay, so it needs to be two weeks. So are you telling me I need to leave my job two weeks from now? Like, what are you telling me? And so I was like, when, what is this date going to be? I didn't even start writing the letter yet. I just, all these questions started coming. Like, when is this date going to be? Because like, if I'm going to start writing this letter, I need to know the date. Like, that doesn't make any sense. I need to know the date. Like, when am I leaving the job? And you guys can see how I am as a child uh, of God. I don't know how he puts up with me. I have all these annoying questions. I always want to know why. I always want to know what's going to happen. I always want to see before I do. I'm just, this is just me being real, okay? But it just, it for me, logically, didn't make sense. I was like, I had the date in mind when I wrote this other resignation letter, which also, you know, I'm not a quitter. But now it seems like a year and a half later, now I have to leave this job too. And so um, the voice came back and was like, you're going to get the date when you're writing the letter. You're going to get the tape when you're writing the letter. So I was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And I think, I was like stressed out, like, oh my gosh, okay, fine, I'll write it. But then I was just like doing all these papers and I was caught up with doing all these other stuff. So I want to say in December, I can actually look up my resignation letter right now uh, for you guys. But it was just so, it was just like on time. So I just found it. Um, it doesn't really tell me the accurate date for when I created this letter. I feel like I might have made a copy of it. Um, and this is not the original because it's saying like the date is like, much later than when I actually left the job. But um, I found the letter and it was dated December 18th, 2017. And oh my gosh, this makes me so emotional <laughs> when I think about it, oh my gosh. Okay, so I wrote the letter. It was like, I wrote the letterhead, I wrote the date, then I wrote like the address for the job. And then I said to whom it may concern. And then I said, please accept my, this letter as my formal resignation from my position. Um, my last day of employment will be January 1st. And I remember bawling, crying while writing this letter because legit, as I started writing the letterhead and I was finished with my address, the date came to me as to when, like what date I needed to date it as. And also when I got to the point where it was like my last day of employment, it also like came to me as well. And I'm just like, <laughs> I was just so amazed because I didn't want to do it. Like I didn't want to leave this job because I was so comfortable and I felt like, you know, within a year or two, I'd be moving up to like a supervisor position. Like, you know, that would be my next goal and then the next step and so on. And whew, 
Ooh, this is so hard, guys. I'm, it's just like amazing to see how God like reveals things to you. Sometimes you might be so disobedient, you don't want to do it. Like you're telling me to trust in you, but what's the plan B? Like what's happening after? I didn't know what was happening. Um, but I do know that I felt so bad like drafting this letter and I was like, I don't even know who to give it to, like which one of my managers or should I give it to the director of the whole like department? Um, so I did end up like mentioning it to one of my supervisors as well as one of my managers and then they told me like you should speak to the director. So all the way up and um, I just remember God telling me, do not settle do not say because this is a kind of job that like they allow people that are in the military and stuff like that that you know they need to go um i'm forgetting the word but like if they're in, on deployment like they can go ahead and do that and then when they come back on reserve they're going reserve so like when they come back they can still have the job and then go back and so on i think it's like a six month like break or something like that so like they can still keep their job and i knew that could have been an option for me if i really wanted to do that i could have focused on like the rest of the semester because it was still like that was gonna be january and by june i would have been done uh with school that could have been an option for me but God was like don't even settle don't even um you need to give in this letter for resignation and actually mean you're resigning from this job like he made it very clear that there was no like turning back like this is what you're going to do and so I kind of kept delaying it delaying it delaying it and even though the date said the 18th I didn't actually hand in the letter on the 18th I think I gave them like a it was like midweek it wasn't like an actual two week notice it was like a week and a half notice and that made me feel worse because I'm like no, it's not even a two-week notice and I'm leaving. So like I went into my um, director's office, which was like a whole maze at that point. Like one of my managers took me there and she's like, yeah, she wants to see you and speak with you and stuff. So it was just me and her in the office. And I haven't really told anybody about this experience, but we were just sitting across from each other and she was just like going through like um, everything that I've done, how I've been like an asset to the company and stuff. And like, she was like, if you want the same thing God told me and warned me about, don't settle. This needs to be a resignation. She was like, are you sure about this? Like, you know, we can still keep you on our, um, on our, not roster, on our payroll. We can still keep you on the payroll. And like, when you graduate, you know, if you change your mind, you can always come back. Like you'd still have this job. We would still love to have you. And I'm looking at her like, oh my gosh. Like, oh my God. I'm like, like at a loss for words because I'm like this is really happening like usually they would have let me go because there's people that left the job for school and they're like I see it wouldn't want to be it type thing and I was like you know maybe I would have the same experience but then I see her actually offering you know to keep me on the payroll and still like they wanted to have me still at this job and I felt even worse because I'm like I'm, I'm a quitter now a two times quitter like this is not my life like I usually don't like giving up on anything no matter how hard it gets like I'm the type of person like I want to keep going I want to keep going like I'm very determined with like any and everything like I'm very positive about how things can work out or whatever so that was so hard but I had to tell her like you know I feel like this is the right decision and this is what I have to do and it was so hard telling my family and my friends about this decision I as well they were just like are you sure like I just remember a lot like are you sure and there were times where I was just like you know like kind of and I remember Michael Todd and his um, Crazy Faith series right now in this time. And I kind of liken it to that time that I was going through. Like, even if you're 51% sure, you know, all it takes is mustard seed faith. And you need to know what God's voice sounds like to know when he's telling you to do something. And I was sure that that was God's voice. I was so sure that it was God's voice that told me I needed to leave the job. Um, but I was also really scared and terrified because, like, I didn't know what was coming next. Like... I like the job that I had there were so many avenues that I could have taken upon graduation that would have allowed me to get closer to like my perceived goal right and we have this list that we of our life like it's gonna have this it's gonna have that and it's gonna have that and God had to make me rip up that list again quoting Michael Todd <laughs> but yeah God had to make me rip up that list and um he needed to open up my heart to other possibilities of other things that could happen so um I left the job my last day was January 1st. I felt so bad because I was like, what if they think I'm using them for the time and a half? Like, you know, but yeah, I just remember for that year, I was like, wow, I only made like, what, $100 that day alone? Like, <laughs> that's all I'm going to have to look forward to on my tax return. <laughs> but like, that's legit what I was thinking. I was like, okay, it'll be like 100 bucks because of the time and a half or whatever. Um, <laughs> I was like, I can't even imagine. Um... But yeah, so I left the job 
And God was like, I don't want you looking for any other jobs. I don't want you thinking about any other jobs. There are going to be opportunities out there. I don't even want you like considering it. Like, no, done deal. So that was really hard for me because I was signed in with LinkedIn, uh, with Indeed and all these other options that were like always sending me notifications. And my school, my college also gave me notifications for career opportunities. So it was very hard and like tempting. I would be like looking at my phone like, oh, wow. Oh, wow. Like all the time, because it's like something that I was interested in. And I was like, oh, I should apply. This is awesome. This pay is great. But then I remember, nope, you're not supposed to be working right now. So yes, I did take those 21 credits or 22 credits um, for my spring semester, which is not recommended at all. Like I was bugging. Like I wanted to graduate on time so bad that I was willing to take my five courses that I needed. That's five times three is 15. I think I had one four credit course and a one credit course. What's that? 20. Oh, and I, had, I got one credit for cheerleading because I was part of the team my um, freshman year. My classes were insane, insane. And some of them were online. Um, I went to school twice a week, I believe. And it was like class all day, class all day, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, and then every other day, I think I was home. I was like doing my hair. I was getting into like recording different videos of my hair uh, for like Instagram and stuff. People were asking me about my hair. Um, but I was also getting into like... Um, different like Bible plans. That's when I really got into like doing Bible plans on version, the Bible app. But also I got into like doing these devotionals, like actually going into the word and like writing different um, revelations that I got, um, praying a lot more and seeking God for like the different things in me that needed to be healed and mended. So I could not check for any jobs at that point. I was just praying and seeking God for what he wanted me to do next. So a lot of you guys didn't know that I was unemployed for about coming on to uh, eight months because August, yeah, that was eight months, right? And so I didn't apply for unemployment because I was like, I think it only works if you were like laid off or like it wasn't like a voluntary employment. So I just didn't look for that. But all the funds that I had put aside, all the funds, literally when I went to school those days, when I had to buy food, when I had to, if I wanted to get my nails done, I could have. Like I was just so involved. Like the money just like stretched. And it was to the point where I didn't really tell many people that I was like jobless. But one of the sisters at my church came to me and she was like, you know, God just laid it upon my heart to give you like a bi-monthly allowance. <laughs> when I tell you God is like amazing, like I didn't, I did not even tell her that I didn't have a job. And like, I knew my mom, you know, tried her best to give me what she could. My dad tried his best to give me what he could, but I never asked, like I didn't really ask. But they just would, they were like, I know you're not working right now, but you're in school, I just want to support you. And they would just give it. Um, and I made do with what I had. And then the fact that she was just like reaching out to me and didn't even tell her, I was just like, yo, it had to be God because I had left my job and for you to just come and like, you know, offer this, like you really don't have to, like my pride was getting in the way. You didn't really have to, but like, I'm so grateful. And like, you never want to, um, rob somebody of their blessing, uh, when they're blessing you. So we're all blessed to be a blessing. And if God sends you to do something to bless another person, he's going to bless you in return. Um, and then it's just going to be like a spiraling uh, or domino effect, whatever you want to call it. So um, I had to get to the point where it's like, okay, I appreciate you and like, I'm grateful for this and I know this had to be God. And so um, that, like, it wasn't like a consistent thing. It was just like based on whatever, I guess, God saw fit that I needed um, or like I just needed to add to whatever I already had saved up. But I learned so much about saving money and making it last and making uh, like, the right decisions about what you're gonna spend your money on but I didn't feel like I was missing out on anything like there wasn't like hangouts I was just like nah I can't do it I don't have money like I didn't feel like I missed out on a lot it was just like if I missed out on anything it was because of school or because of church like that's it and wasn't really missing out because school was a priority and um, my ministry was a priority as well so um, just everything worked out right with that so now I'm like okay God you know I graduated I'm done with this semester I'm done with the summer course I'm officially like done with school and I don't want to be like those people not like I'm downplaying anybody you graduate from college and then it's really hard for you to find a job I was like God like you don't want me to apply like this is me seeking God in like April or like maybe even March and then just like continuous like whenever I would think about it like random points in a month I was just like well God you know I'm coming down to graduation like you know, I should be looking for a job. I should be finding something upon graduation. You know, um, I already have my degree. I'll be done with this, like this year. Like I'll have my bachelor's degree. I should be looking for a job. And God was like, no daughter, now it's not the time. No daughter, now it's not the time. No daughter, now it's not the time. And 
whenever I even like considered anything or like when I saw my emails, the jobs that I was really excited about and felt like I was missing out on were jobs in the legal field because um, I don't know if you guys knew, but I wanted to be a lawyer and um, like that was my goal upon graduation. I was gonna go straight into law school and become a lawyer. And I was just like, like people right now are competing. They're taking their LSAT, they're doing this, they're doing that. Um, what should I be doing? And so I, I believe, I don't remember exactly when, but like I was looking at different options for online, studying online for your LSAT and I was doing that kind of stuff. So I got involved in studying for my LSAT that summer upon graduation. And I was like, all right, so I can't get into school now because I should have already taken the LSAT. But like I also don't have a job and I need a job in this field so that they can like, you know, uh, consider me as like a possible candidate. So I'm just like stuck in between. I'm like, LSAT, job, job, LSAT. Like I didn't know what God wanted me to do. And I was just like, I'm not hearing anything from you. Like, you know, whenever I seek you, I usually get like an answer, but like, I'm not hearing anything. And so um, it came to the point where uh, <laughs> it was nine months after, so September, I want to say towards the middle of September, God was like, all right, now you can go look for a job. And I remember the first, one of the first places that I went was in LinkedIn. I was like, okay, I'm finally going to check my LinkedIn. I'm finally going to uh, update my profile. I don't think I updated the fact that I was like just unemployed. I think it had already, it had still said that I was working at the museum. Um, I didn't update my profile. Um, so I went in and I checked and apparently I had all these random messages. But one of them stood out in particular. There was a message that I got in February. And then I got another message in July saying, I don't know if you saw my message. I thought you'd be a great um, candidate for this position, um, et cetera, et cetera. And so I like, I was a little nervous because I was like, who reaches out to somebody like that many times for a position? Like you usually just move on. Like it was February now, it's all the way to September. So I reached back out. I was like, thank you for considering me as a candidate. You know, um, I did not see your message in initially, but um, I would love to learn more about this position. So like they sent me to the website and all that fun stuff. But then even at that point, I was, I was like sending out my uh, resume, just mass. Like I had a resume for uh, retail, I had a, a resume for legal, I had a resume for education. Because now I was considering that, you know, like um, it was an option for me to be a teacher. A teacher. And I was like, oh, that is, I never really thought about that, but I'm a Sunday school teacher, so like I wouldn't mind doing it for my gap year until I get to law school. So like that was my goal. Um, and so I was just like applying for all these different positions and stuff. Some of those jobs led me all the way out in Jersey, actually two of them. Um, but one that I went for, I realized, nope, it was like a scam. It was like basically one of those jobs where you're going to these different people. It's basically one of those things where like Con Edison says, like, if this person comes to you, don't even talk to them. Don't like deal with that because I was like, then how does it work? Because I was nosy. I was like, how does this work then? Like, um, <laughs> you know, like, how are you guys getting money if you're just helping? This guy was giving me like a... Um, a lesson on like businesses. He was like, you create a problem and then you fix the problem. And I was just like, I, I'm out. So like during our day, like getting to know the ins and outs of this job and stuff, another job calls me and I actually had the interview with them. And I was like on the phone, legit, like answering interview type thing while he was inside. Like, I think we were at a cafe or something like catching up and he was giving me all the details and I legit like, uh-huh. Yeah, I'm definitely, definitely interested. And like, I went through all the questions that they would ask me. Like, he legit sat there and waited. After that, I was like, all right, this sounds like a better option. It's not as much money, but it will be great. Like, even if I had to, like, travel to New Jersey every day or, like, move. You know, I've always considered moving and all that stuff, so I don't mind. Um, and I legit got on the bus, got on the train, headed back to New York. Like, it was never again. So <laughs> there were other positions that were asking me to travel. Like, I don't really know if I want to do all this traveling because I'm like, if this is what God wants me to do, it'll be so much... Not easier, but it'll definitely be something that I wouldn't mind being a part of. Like, if I'm iffy and, like, not really sure, not really interested um, in it, like, no. But for some reason, the message from LinkedIn, the teacher position, was, like, it was getting more traction with me. Like, it seemed more legitimate. It was something that I was more interested in. Like, I didn't mind doing. And I didn't really care about, like, the, um, like the salary. Um, but it was going to be, like, my first full-time job. I was excited for that. I was like, oh, I don't mind doing that. Um, so... I scheduled an interview uh, with the recruiter. We spoke on the phone. Um, yeah, I gave her the rundown with my credibility, um, my experience, my background, all that fun stuff. And then she basically said, you'd be a great candidate for this position. Um, just go ahead, this is how you're gonna apply. This is the um, 
the reference you're gonna put, all this fun stuff. And she was legitimate. Like she actually worked for the company as a recruiter. So I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. So she gave me everything. She was like, make sure you have this in your resume. Make sure you have this in your cover letter. Like she gave me the rundown. And I was like, all right, I have the blueprint. I know exactly what to do. So now I am preparing for my official interview, which is a group interview. I don't know if any of you guys have ever been on a group interview before, but like, yo, it was so intimidating. There was like at least 50 of us in that room and they were like, don't worry, you guys aren't competing with each other. We have positions for everybody. But in my head, I'm like, there was a group interview for today, there's a group interview for tomorrow and then the other day. Like, what do you mean you have positions for everybody? All right, I'm not, I'm not as worried, but I know that if this is what God wants me to have, like, I'm gonna have it. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna go in there and be confident and be confident. Like, even if I don't get this job, like at the end of the day, this is um, still, uh, experience for me and I always think about that like an interview process is like an experience right you check the ins and the outs of like what to do and what not to do on an interview why did I get this job why didn't I get this job what did I do here that made me not get the job and what did I do here that like made the person love me and want me to be in that position so the group interview had two parts one they like gave you the rundown the company what to expect the different positions that are open um, the hours all that fun stuff and then the second Oh, and then we played like games and they got to see how, obviously they're always watching. So they got to see how we interacted with each other. Um, I made a few friends actually that actually got the position and we're still like, cool. Um, because like they had different openings at different schools uh, for the teacher position. So um, we did that and then we had the one-on-one -on -one interview where there were different uh, recruiters or there were different interviewers in different rooms. And uh, I remember the CEO being there and I really wanted to interview with the CEO because I was like, oh my gosh, that'd be so cool, right? But instead I interviewed with two people in one room and it was just like, Kind of like back and forth kind of thing and they were just giving me the rundown and well they loved me and um they said you can expect um a call back within a week and i was like okay you know whatever god wants if this is for me it's gonna be mine i'm expecting a call within a week and then it'll be mine if i don't get the call then you know back to square one just keep looking for other jobs but i knew teaching was now an option like that's something that i'm open to now now isn't god funny isn't god funny five years ago from today I would have always said I would never be a teacher. Um, maybe I'll be a professor after uh, I'm done with law school and I retire as a lawyer. I could go back to like the like be a professor and like teach everything that I've learned in life and like help young adults like with their career path. <laughs> but never like a teacher, not in public school, not in like elementary, middle school, high school, none of that. Like I was just like, nope, not me, because I wasn't like the best student, so I couldn't imagine myself being a teacher. Um, but yeah, now that was a possibility. <laughs> Can you imagine if I had applied to other jobs in February or like January of that same year? <laughs> or if I had seen that message in February or July when she reached out to me, I would have been like, nope, not interested. Can you imagine? Oh my gosh. So needless to say, guys, they called me the next day. The next day. I was expecting a call within a week. They called me the next day and were like, we loved you. We want you to work with us. You have the job if you're willing. And then they were like, we're going to send over the contract. All you need to do is sign it. You need to go get your um, fingerprint and all that stuff. Once everything clears with your bank background check, the job is yours. And so I was like, yeah, the job is mine then. And I was just like, thank you, God. I saw the salary. I was like, ah, thank you, God. I'm sorry. But like, for real though, it was so much more than I've been working for with my any of the jobs that I was working for ever it was my first full-time job and it was in a position that I never ever saw myself being in as a teacher and oh my gosh this is like what my second year and I've just learned so much I've grown so much I've learned to trust God more that like you might think you have your life planned out for yourself and God is like nah sis nah bro like that's not what you should be doing right now this is where I'm taking you. This is what I want you to do. This is where I want you to get involved in. And we just have to trust him and we have to trust in his timing and know that whatever he has planned is better than what we see ourselves doing um, in the long run. So know that his strength is made perfect in our weakness. So in the times where we're like, God, this is so hard. God, I don't know what to do. We're crying out to him. That's where we can see that, hey, if I connect to God, I can have the strength of God because I'm depending and I'm relying on his strength and not on my own. Our strength, our own willpower is limited, but his is limitless. So I just want to encourage you guys. I hope you guys um, love this video. Again, make sure that you are subscribed to the channel. Um, give it a thumbs up and come back for more Christian Chronicles. Okay. Be blessed, spread love, and stay beautiful inside and out. I appreciate you guys. Continue subscribing, continue sharing the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys. Thank you.
weird I am, okay? Okay. Let me see, can you get a little bit taller? Just a little bit? Just for me. Just for 